Sometimes when a wrestling show does something that is so galling and so stupid at the beginning of the night, like it just sets the mood for me for the rest of the evening, and there's nothing that you're going to do to come back from it. And I'm just riding out the string, and I'm just going to harp all over your show and whine and complain about it, because that's what an angry wrestling man like me does. And you look at SmackDown this week, and you could just tell this opening promo segment had Vince written all over it. Nobody wrote that but Vince, and nobody thought that was funny but Vince. And you know it. He's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> he's, he's the big dog, but Baron Corbin has a chihuahua bark, not less entertainment. I guess it should be kind of the thing with Vince. Almost feels like a Simpsons cutaway skit or something, or Family Guy cutaway skit or something. Like, every time you get something that is so ridiculous and so bad on Raw or SmackDown, you should literally have Vince there just to say, now that's entertainment! Could you imagine, like, that would make sense. And that, in and of itself, would probably get over and be arguably the most over thing about either Raw or SmackDown in his. That's the problem. But golly, Baron Corbin on a mic is brutal. The subject matter, the way this promo was structured was horrible. This whole thing about the person coming out in the bulldog mascot costume was dumb, especially because it wasn't Roman Reigns. At least if you were going to do that, at least have it be Roman Reigns, because then that would have been something that would have been kind of cool. That would have at least been a really good payoff to all of this. But instead, it's a match of Shorty G, and apparently now Mustafa Ali got his first game back. And unfortunately, Chad Gable still can't find his dignity anywhere. Taking on Robin Roode, and you guessed it, Paul Ziggler! They gave him an open mic, a live, hot, open mic to start off the show. And then he said anything at all. But then you gotta follow that up with a match! Again, and I emphasize! <laughs> Don't sing him. It's horrible. And what, what's the point of this? Like, what is the whole point of this? Shorty G and Ali already have a spot on the Survivor Series team. Baron Corbin earlier is trying to talk about how you should be the team captain for SmackDown. Like, who cares? So this match is so that way Shorty G and Ali can try to defend their spot on the team. And then they win anyways because here comes Roman Reigns to... Oh, forget it. Like, as soon as this was over, I'm like, you know what? I'm done for the night. I did not stop watching. No. I was just done. Like I had mentally checked out. I had tuned out the product, tuned out the show, even though I was still technically watching. My thoughts on the Firefly Funhouse segment? The belt is blue. The goddamn belt is blue! I don't know if that's cool or not. It's different. It looks different. I'm always usually a fan for different, so that's okay. I guess... But really, I guess, it's a blue belt. The Fiend wanted to make the belt blue. Just like Vince wrote the show and made most of our balls blue. Horrible. Then you do some crap with Drew Gulak and the freaking god dang B team so that way Braun Strowman could squash him in quick order. Ugh. Again, what's the point? That's the thing. So often you're left wondering, what was that about? Why should I care? What was the point? There was no point. And hence, why the viewership is not nearly as strong as it had been in years past. This is not just a thing about flippy floppy guys ruining the business. This is not just a thing about people are cutting the cores. This is not just a thing about there's more competition in the marketplace. It's not about this. It's not about that. It's not just about guys who can't cut promos for the most part to save their damn lives. It's not about this. It's not about that. It's ultimately about the stuff that happens on these shows has no purpose, has no meaning, has no significance, has no consequence. Why would fans continue to tune in every week and passionately at that? 
when you are telling them every week that you do not care. If you do not care, then I do not care. Like you look at the New Day. Kofi's back to serving up flapjacks. And the least I can say, if he was serving up flapjack facials to white bitches sitting along the ramp, then I could kind of get down with that. But he's not. He's not doing that. He's just sitting there and right back into the slappy, dancy, happy, go lucky, Kofi. Yaman! With Xavier Woods being out with the Achilles injury, could we at least do something with Big E? A singles push. You don't even have to have him turn against Kofi. You don't have to do any of that. You could still even have him do some tag team stuff. And while you sit there and some of you will defend it, Talking about, well, these guys are still over, okay, to a point, yes, but can they do something else? Can they do something different? Because eventually what's going to happen is you're going to run this gimmick into the ground so damn much that in a few years from now, if you ever wanted to come back to it as a bit of a nostalgia act to give you a short-term pop, there's not going to be a pop to be had! There's not going to be a pop to be had! It's like this tag match for the tag titles, apparently. The Revival versus the New Day. You know, this is all so that way... You could set it up and you could have members of the freaking NXT roster come out and attack everybody in the match. Unpopular opinion incoming, but a valid opinion maybe at that. Is why in the blue hell? Why in the blue hell? When NXT can't even beat AEW. Are you bringing these people over from NXT, a show that gets a third to a quarter of the viewership of SmackDown on Fox, and having them beat down your freaking main roster talent? And no, NXT is not main roster, and everybody damn good well knows it. The viewership numbers clearly reflect that they are not main roster types. It's not a main roster brand. It's not a main roster product. That's why they put it up in that crappy Full Sail University every week. Stop sitting there and undercutting the main roster to have the people that are on a show that does a quarter of the damn viewership come and attack them. Especially uncharismatic vanilla fucking wafers like Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong or whoever the hell else attacked them. Who even cares? Undisputed Hold up. What's undisputed about the Undisputed Era is that they undisputedly, absolutely suck and aren't drawing flies to horse crap when it comes to eyeball on NXT on Wednesday night. How you like that? How you like that? And that, my friends, is 100% true. Not heavy machinery. Otis can potentially draw some money someday. Give me a little something, a little comic relief. I, I was tuned in a little bit for this. Yes, I was. Having to like, Otis. Yeah. Like he's got personality. I know for a lot of fans, they're like, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? That, that's called having a little personality, a little flair to you, a little charisma, the ability to connect with the audience in a meaningful way. Setting yourself up as somebody that could actually draw money someday. I know you see a lot of wrestlers now and you have no clue what the hell that looks like. And that's not your fault, that's just the way the business is now. And then you think you're going to get yet another Bailey versus Nikki Cross match. Ah, but then it somehow devolves into Shayna Baszler is attacking and oh, buddy. Again, same philosophy as before. Let's take the women that we've been featuring where the audience continues to decline for SmackDown. So then let's bring over the women from a show that does a quarter to a third of the total viewership and have them attack the main roster talent. It helps nobody. Nobody! So it was helping anybody. You'd have done better than 700,000 viewers on NXT this week. Period. Although I could say, arguably, the reason you didn't get more viewers is because the Luchasaurus is back, but nevertheless, it's a different show, it's a different brand, it's a different product. 
But all of a sudden, here comes the SmackDown women after the NXT women are now. Sasha Banks is sitting there and issuing a challenge, and Dakota Kai is in why she's not. You know, all these other unfounded questions, or not unfounded questions, but who gives a crap questions come up. It's like, what is the point of any of this? You know, and here's the whole deal. Anytime the WWE, by and large, does something that involves a true invasion angle, it sucks! 2001! Kiss my ass, it was terrible! Look at what they ended up doing with the Nexus! That was an invasion angle! <laughs> Only took them to the SummerSlam to completely crap the bed on that one! They didn't wait three months! But now all of a sudden, this, this is going to be really good at this again. This is nothing. It's like this eight-woman tag match was nothing. Because you just had the SmackDown women beat the NXT women. So again, the NXT women don't go over. So they don't look good for this. The SmackDown women beat the women that most of the viewers watching SmackDown don't watch anyway. So it doesn't help them. Do you get what I'm getting at here? At least when you got to the ending of the show, the closing of the show, the main event segment, Miz TV with Daniel Bryan. You put Daniel Bryan in the ring with the microphone, across from Miz in the ring with the microphone, and you'll always have something really good. You'll always have tremendous chemistry between the two of these. It's just natural. It just works. And I don't know where they're going with the Daniel Bryan bit, but you know what? The whole interaction between him and Bray Wyatt, you know what, okay. Daniel Bryan's going to take on The Fiend at Survivor Series, okay. This was at least a somewhat workable finish to the show for me. Because God knows this show needed it. Like, again, man, that opening was so bad. That first half hour goes by and you're like, what in the hell was the point of any of this? There was no point. Because nothing happened. Nothing of any consequence or significance. You didn't get heat on anybody because the heels lost. You didn't do anything better for Roman because you didn't do anything cool with them. Now that's entertainment. Smackdown sucked this week. It's like Vince took a whole huge hunk of dump on the Fox executive's desk. That's what it felt like. And out popped the SmackDown script. Anyways, I'm the wrestling, angry wrestling man. This is Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Now that's entertainment.